President Biden is warning that Russian President Vladimir Putin may turn to chemical and biological weapons now as Moscow's offensive slows in Ukraine. Watch this. His back is against the wall, and uh, he's now he's talking about new false flags he's setting up, including he's asserting that we, America, have biological as well as chemical weapons in Europe. Simply not true. I guarantee you. They're also suggesting that Ukraine has biological and chemical weapons in Ukraine. That's a clear sign he's considering using both of those. He's already used chemical weapons in the past, and we should be careful about about to, what's about to come. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst, General Jack Keane. General, good morning to you. Thanks very much for being here. How concerning should we be by this? And is this a red line for the U.S.? I remember under the Trump administration, when Syria used chemical weapons, the U.S. Uh, sent uh, strikes, 50 strikes to Syria. Well, yeah, certainly it's something to be concerned of. Obviously, uh, when Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons, uh, under the Obama administration and certainly under the Trump administration, it was fully done with the authorization of their sponsor, Russia, who was providing the air power inside of Syria. And, and the Trump administration uh, did, I think, absolutely the right thing in responding to that. I don't believe the, the first military strike was as effective as it could have been, and uh, we criticized it for that. And then Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons again, and the second strike was considerably more effective. And what's clear here is I'm not sure we have to call it a red line. The Trump team didn't do that either. Uh, Obama did and then didn't, didn't fulfill it. Uh, I think we have to be clear, unequivocally clear, that there will be consequences here. Certainly, President Biden likely on yesterday in discussing uh, Ukraine uh, with the European world leaders. I'm confident this was probably on the table. They have a NATO ministerial meeting this week. Uh, it's got to be on the table, and they've got to come to some kind of agreement in terms of what the severe consequences are that Russia should pay for that. Russia has to know that there will be a price to be paid if they move down the line of, of WMD. It, it changes the nature of the war. Well, I mean, this high-stakes trip to Europe this week, General, let's talk about what you want to hear out of NATO. Uh, the president will attend the NATO summit on Thursday. He's got a G7 meeting, a European Council summit on the Russian war uh, on Ukraine on Thursday. Then he travels to Poland on Friday, plans to meet with uh, Poland's president this weekend amidst uh, what we're expecting to be 5 million, uh, ultimately uh, 5 million refugees uh, going to Poland. I had the opportunity to speak with the first lady of Poland. She told me to expect 5 million. W what would you like to see come out of this trip? Well, first of all, unequivocal support for Ukraine. And, 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 and by that, I mean to help Ukraine win against Russia. And that opportunity, we didn't believe, was there a few weeks ago, to be frank about it, uh, because we thought the Russians would overmatch the Ukrainian military. But the Russians have, as we now know, have failed uh, miserably, particularly in their ground war. Their air and artillery campaign has had some success devastating success in killing innocent people. Uh, but that reality is there, and we have to sustain this because it can go on for weeks and months. And we just can't feel good about what we've done in the past. We have to keep the arms and munitions flowing, and certainly air defense systems, yeah. long-range and short-range anti-tank systems, which have had so much success in aiding the Ukrainian ground forces to literally halt the, the Russian ground forces has been uh, critical to that success. Yeah. So this flow has to has to keep coming, and they need the NATO uh, NATO countries to participate. There's some countries that are not participating and have have capacity, and certainly I, I would hopefully they they would discuss once again giving the Ukrainians MIGs. But that's number one is is yeah. that kind of unequivocal support. The the second thing is. Put on the table about Putin being a war criminal. I know it's a legal issue with the International Criminal Court, but make it a policy issue at, uh, at the NATO ministerial meeting. And I believe they should publish a list of the generals that are executing the war crimes in Ukraine for Vladimir Putin and put them on that list and start to 
provide public scrutiny to them, something they are not used to. Putin obviously is used to that kind of, that kind of criticism. I think that is absolutely mm. vital. And of course, uh, a consequential decision on what actions would be taken if Putin increases uh, <clears throat> the level of threat in Ukraine by using chemical or biological weapons, or certainly nuclear weapons, uh, which would which I think would invite uh, a war with NATO for sure. Well, I mean, from the beginning of this conflict, Joe Biden has been very clear in terms of what he won't do. And he has said repeatedly, we're not going to send troops, we're not going to fight with Russia, we're not in a war with Russia, pretty much telling Putin everything that he was going to do and what he's not going to do. What we're not hearing anything about is this JCPOA deal, negotiations for the return to the 2015 Iran nuclear deal are now uh, imminent, uh, reportedly now hinge on whether the U.S. will remove the terrorist designation for Iran's elite revolutionary guard. I spoke with Ohio Congressman Mike Turner on Sunday Morning Futures on, you know, whether the Biden administration is going around Congress to make this deal and how come the American people don't know anything about it. Here, here's uh, Turner. Watch this. All we're hearing is that the negotiations are ongoing, even upon questioning of what are the key provisions. We're not receiving information, which we should be, obviously. You know, they keep saying that one of the concerns that Iran has is that the deal, um, you know, can be put aside in the next administration. And in order for it not to be put aside, it would have to be a treaty. That means it would have to be a, an agreement that's good enough for the United States to actually ratify it in the Senate. Now, they're clearly going to miss the mark of a, a deal that even is beneficial to the United States, and Congress certainly is not going to to be in support. General, I've got so many questions on this. I don't even think we have enough time. But number one is, uh, should we be removing the designation of terrorist nation uh, for Iran? I thought they were the biggest supporter of terrorism. Number two, why is Russia working on behalf of the U.S.? And how come we're not hearing anything about this deal and we understand that it's imminent for the United States to get back into it? They're going around Congress. Yeah, well, well. First of all, I mean, removing the IRGC as a as a foreign terrorist organization designation makes no sense based on their obvious behavior. This is the organization that fuels the Houthis and the civil war in Yemen. It fuels the civil war in, in Syria. Uh, they they are the ground force in Syria. They're they're proxies. All the rockets and missiles that the Hezbollah and Hamas has all come through the IRGC hands. The IRGC is the organization that was stopping the oil shipments going through the Persian Gulf and was responsible for bringing down one of Saudi Arabia's largest oil fields. They have, uh, they have brought increased violence and terror to the Middle East and, and worldwide, and certainly they have earned that designation as a foreign terrorist organization. People say, well, you, what's the issue there? Because it hasn't changed their behavior by designating them as such. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, we're labeling uh, Putin as a war criminal because he, f he flat is, and it tells the world that. It's not changing his behavior. Certainly labeling Hitler yeah. as a war criminal didn't change his behavior either. But it's important for the world to stand up against this kind of violence and tell people and the world who they are and the horrible things that they're doing and give them that public declaration of evil, which the foreign terrorist organization does. Certainly Russia, yeah. th this thing in the negotiations from the beginning, Maria, has not been right. The, why the United States would ever agree to Iran's position that we're not going to negotiate yeah. with the United States over a new deal because we had pulled out of the old deal in 2018, we should have pushed that aside right at the beginning saying, look, we're going to talk face to face or we're not going to talk at all. Yeah. And we're going to pack up our right. bags and go. That should have been our position from the beginning. That's a great point. And this point. is quite lame what we're doing through intermediaries. Yeah. It's a great point. Uh, and by the way, no wonder the Saudis won't take our phone calls, OK? Uh, the Houthis just attacked, uh, attacked the Middle East and United Arab Emirates a week ago. And, uh, you know, we don't need any more evidence than that. General, it's great to see you. Always a pleasure to get your insights on all of this. Thank you, sir.